Okay, so it's been around 10 minutes, I guess, since we got scratched. So you must be bleeding, right? So bleeding generally has to stop by 6 to 10 minutes. That is the limit. So what happens is when we are, you know, when we have an injury, there is uh, breakage in the skin. So cells and connective tissue get exposed. So what happens is this connective tissue, it is highly thrombogenic. The word thrombogenic should indicate thrombin, which is a part of, say, the clotting pathway. Okay. So we are able to sense the presence of the zombies. That's nice. Right. So what happens? How does clotting occur? So platelets play a very important role. So platelets, within 11 seconds, they interact with von Willebrand factor, which is factor 8 of this clotting pathway. and this will interact with the thrombin that is getting formed in the clotting pathway and together they would uh, activate the formation of a plug, a uh, gel-like substance. Right, so that's Okay, let's collect the current. Please just look at that. Yikes. Anyway, so, so there is a formation of a gel-like substance in which the platelets are going to get accumulated and this thrombin, as it passes down the clotting pathway, it forms fibrin and this formation of fibrin is going to cement all these platelets in place. So, the injury should not only have bleeding, it should also have infection. So, what about these microorganisms and our immune system? Our immune system basically composes of cells like macrophages, which are enlarged monocytes. This is going to get uh, activated and it's going to secrete some chemical signals, which is going to activate neutrophils circulating in the blood to come and reach the injury site. Right, so we can also think of cleaning our wounds, right? So that's how we can clean ourselves of this infection. But the thing we have to remember is this is an abandoned house, so that means stagnant water. So when we have stagnant water, what it means is waterborne organisms like say E. coli or non-tuberculous mycobacteria, Legionella or Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So all this can be, you know, abundant in this stagnant water. So we shouldn't infect ourselves more by trying to clean using stagnant water, right? Okay, so coming back to the immune system, so neutrophils accumulate, I said, and how does this neutrophils act? They actually, you know, are like a bomb. They contain an oxygen bomb. Just like, you know, how we, using bullets, we can put holes in whatever and whoever we shoot. What this neutrophils does is it is going to use an oxygen bomb, which is going to burst, oxidative burst is going to create holes in all the bacteria or anything in the vicinity. So it is advantageous when there is a lot of bacteria around. Now this, this is going to continuously happen. What is going? It, it is going to affect our own tissues. So that's when it is called as a hyper reaction. We have to intervene. Otherwise, it's an advantage. Okay, so let's go down. So, all uh, the cytokines that I spoke about is human necrosis factor alpha and interleukin 1, which is, a, is secreted by the monocyte, which is going to send signal for neutrophils to accumulate. Right? And I said neutrophils are kind of like a bomb. So, all this is going to require a lot of energy. Oh my gosh. Energy by glucose oxidation. So, no wonder when we are sick we feel tired right so because of all this energy is probably going to our immune cells trying to fight the infection so what about these zombies how do they derive the energy so if you think about uh, say diet what do these zombies do they generally try to bite our head off right so basically a protein diet maybe and among all the other things like fat fat always comes free we don't have to worry about it actually what about sugar, carbohydrates? Carbohydrates are 
formed, it can be formed from protein. Non-essential amino acids can get converted into, say, glucose. So we don't have to worry about, uh, like, we don't have to worry about uh, glucose at all. But, but then, uh, say, is only protein, fat, and carbohydrates are important? What about vitamins and minerals? No wonder, I guess, these things have their bones really soft because if not, how can she just you know, snap off the neck and you know bash the skull in? I don't think they are getting enough calcium in their diet. And what about uh, other things like vitamins? We know we have to take a lot of fruits and vegetables. Now, touching things, these infective things, we have to depend on skin integrity for you know the infection not to pass through at all. So for that, actually, vitamin A is quite important. All right, there's one more. Okay, let me go this way. Uh, she's snapping the neck off. So vitamin A is also called as an anti-infective vitamin. Okay, let's get some more bullets. What else? What are the vitamin is important? So now we are in the in a very cold environment. So I can think of sensation, feeling cold. What is this? Ah, foot. Basically, chips. Okay, so I guess we are done here. So I can think of vitamin B1, which is you know important for us to feel sensations like cold. Otherwise, it will call uh, uh, it will cause peripheral neuropathy. Oh, we seem to be heading into a blizzard. So. It is important for us to feel the hypothermia, right? Then only our body can take some defensive steps. So what are the vitamin and minerals we can think of? So we'll come back to that in our next episode. So the topics discussed today are about hemostasis, about platelet activation, inflammation, something about immune system, cytokines, and a little bit about nutrition. So what happens when we get injured? A lot of things happen. So basically, cell membranes they start uh, leaking, you know, chemicals which is going to be pain-producing, prostaglandin, uh, leukotriene. There's going to be activation of the clotting pathway to produce thrombin, and then the blood vessel is going to leak blood, right? So it has to stop with the help of endothelin, which is like adrenaline, going to constrict the blood vessel. And then there is von Willebrand factor, which is going to act along with platelet which is platelet secreting, adenosine diphosphate and thrombaxin. There's going to be pain, which is mainly by bradykinin. And this question is a teaching question. So the answer is all of the above. So we all want a high metabolic rate. So increase by 30% can be achieved by what? A high protein diet. So zombies, they don't put on weight, right? So if you have fever, every 10 degree rise, you know, the metabolic rate can go up like 100%. If you have a thyroxine injection, 50 to 100% increase. Excess brain activity, more than 100% increase. So neutrophils, what motivates a neutrophil to, you know, accumulate? Is it bacterial product? Is it antigen antibody complex? Is it cell membrane degradation product? Macrophage? The answer is all of the above. The neutrophils is motivated by a lot of things. So, what causes fever? Is it macrophage secreting, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and interleukin 1? Is it mast cell degranulation, CD4 plus T helper cell secreting? interleukin-4 and interleukin-5 or is it complement factor C3A and C5A? So it is interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. When there is allergy, mast cells go crazy and interleukin-4 and 5 
they uh, help in antibody production and complement factors C3A and C5A, they increase the vascular permeability. So, this is a good one, stagnant water, what bacteria we can expect. E. coli, the other bacteria so far, the names you must be familiar, you have seen it quite a bit. So, I hope you are all enjoying the video so far. So, kindly do show your support to my channel. Thank you.